There are pretty much no installation videos or anything as far as reviews on the Dynaglow series of the G7500 heaters. I actually installed this with a Nest E thermostat, and so I thought I'd do a quick overview. What you're looking at is a Dynaglow EG7500DH. Uh, what you have with that is it is external thermostat capable. It also has an internal thermostat. I want to use it with a Nest, so I wanted to go with the external thermostat. A uh, quick overview on the installation of, as far as the connections, electrical connections on this. Page 8 and 9, uh, if you look it up online, you can also find this soft copy on the Dynaclo website, soft copy being digital. Um, you have L1, L2. Uh, those right there are going to be your 240s. You're also going to have a ground going in over here. I'll show all that to you. And then you've got the actual external thermostat. You'll see a number 1, number 2. Uh, with that number one, number two, uh, when we're actually looking at it, I'll show you what I did as far as which one goes from the one to what part of the nest and vice versa, the number two, where it goes actually on the nest thermostat also is when I ran the cables. One additional thing is right here. Uh, I got the normal thermostat wire from Lowe's. Uh, you can get either three uh, wire or five wire. They are normally 18 gauge, and that's why I did get. But if you actually, when you're looking at this page nine of your installation on this uh, Dyn & Glow heater, it actually says uh, the lead wire, the external temperature control, external thermostat, cannot be less than 14 AWG. I do not have 14 gauge uh, thermostat wire. I actually had 18 gauge. I stuck with 18 gauge. It worked, although I did have to use a 24 volt C wire transformer, which I'll also show you in a moment with the Nest to power the Nest so that it would continue to get power and power its battery and be able to work via my Wi-Fi, which is why I wanted it. Uh, if I did have 14 gauge, maybe it would have got enough power off the heater itself. I did not, so I have 18 gauge, but if you have uh, 14 gauge wire as far as your thermostat control, you may be, get a, be able to get around not having to do a C wire transformer powering the Nest. And I'll show you that. It should become more clear here in a moment when I show it to you. Okay, the actual overview of this setup. That right there is the actual Dynaglow 7500 series. 7500 means 7500 watts max output. It is good to about, I believe, 750 cubic feet. Uh, this shop is actually uh, 500 cubic feet, and it heats it up very nice. I do not have it on, not have it on right now, but uh, that is the heater itself. Uh, with that. Uh, coming over here, came off of, I had to put in a 240 uh, volt uh, circuit for it. Uh, with that, it ended up being, if you start doing the math, 7500 divided by 240, you're going to come up with a little bit over 30 amps. So I put it the next higher, a 40 amp circuit breaker in there. Uh, two 8 gauge wires for each of the hots came off of this, going over to the heater. And then the actual ground, which is... Uh, with the ground, it is actually a 10 gauge. It's all, you can come down to a 10 gauge on that. It's gonna be hard to find an eight gauge. So two eight gauge on the two power wires, each of those running uh, 110 to 120. And then the green uh, neutral wire will actually be working off of a 10 gauge because it doesn't carry the same You can load. find plenty of other videos on how to install 240 on YouTube. So I won't go into that, but uh, you are essentially gonna need eight gauge wire, uh, the specifics on the wire and all that you can find other videos but you're going to need eight gauge wire for at minimum for the 40 amps two of those uh two hots and then your neutral can be 10 gauge as far as coming over as far as running it over to the heater on this particular one i brought it down took it down through the wall came over all behind the wall so i could protect because i have a lot of stuff here as far as workout equipment and all that i didn't want any, i wanted it to be protected as far as banging it so i didn't run the conduit on the outside Took it through the studs up to here, brought it out right there. And you see I took my 40 schedule uh, conduit and ran it over to a junction box right there. Uh, after that, uh, put those in, put the wires, and then I actually ran it via some flexible conduit over to the actual heater. The heater does not come with any flex flexible conduit, so you can see the flexible conduit I have coming off the left side of the heater there and run over to that junction box up on the wall. Uh, that right there, you can buy that at any of your local hardware stores. I went down to my local Ace because I didn't realize it didn't come with it. 
and bought about uh, 20, 25 feet for $20 and I used three to four feet of it. I had to get rid of the rest because I probably won't be using it again for years again. So it wasn't worth keeping. Uh, the actual stud I used, you can do it multiple ways. I also put a center stud in, lag bolted uh, two, different, two different beans up there on the left and right side via 2x4. And then I wanted to be able to turn this heater if I wanted to, so I just did a center lag bolt. And it stuck up there and works very nicely, no issues. All right, next thing we'll talk about is the actual electrical connections that we have inside this. I'll open that up momentarily and I'll show you uh, what I did as far as running both the wires coming in for the 240 and the uh, thermostat wire and how we hook those up to the... Okay, case. first off, this right here, you can see the L1 and L2. Uh, those wires right there, you see the black and the red. Those are your two 8-gauge wires coming off of the actual junction box. Each of those run 110 to 120, comes up 240. You also have the green wire that's going over there, and you can see that going to the neutral. So that's your power wires. Over here, on the thermostat, you see the thermostat wire coming in from the right side right now of the screen, and going in there, you get a red and a white. The red is going to the number one and the white is going to the number two and then we'll show how they go into it over the nest okay nest thermostat you see right now it's 45 degrees in here i have this off uh, i'll show you at the very end of the video how it works via wi-fi and all that no big deal but it does work just fine one thing you will see is you see this uh 24 24 volt uh ac adapter that is providing c wire power up to the nest so the nest can actually recharge itself it was not getting enough voltage off of the actual heater. So I had to install that so that this would actually charge itself, connect to Wi-Fi, etc., and work fine. Uh, one great thing about the Nesties is I can actually use this. I have it to where it's off all the time, and then I have it uh, set the lowest setting is uh, for emergency heat, it's 35 degrees. So if I don't want my paint or whatever else in here that I don't want to freeze, it'll come on automatically, and otherwise I got savings throughout the year. Uh, it doesn't get that terribly cold. It's one of the west side of the Cascades right up against them. So we'll see in the 30s and 40s here. Uh, obviously, depending on what you have as far as your local area, that may or may not work for you, but it works very well for me. All right, with that, the wires that we're looking at. All right, remember the number one coming off of the thermostat wire? That right there is gonna be your actual heater control. That's going to W1. And we have a second one over here, another white one right uh, here. And that came in off of the number two off the heater. And that's going to your R, and that is your power. Uh, with that, you see these wires right here. I have one right here, and you see it's got some black electrical tape on it. Same thing for one up here. These both came off of this 24 volt transformer because I realized I was not getting enough power, and it was going to emergency mode on the Nest because it was not getting enough power to recharge. With the, the 24 volt uh, C wire transformer that I got off Amazon, uh, 15, 16 dollars. I'll put a link in there one into uh, the one I, particular one I get received. Uh, you can get multiple different ones. There's a lot of on Amazon. You can, if you're getting it locally, if you can find one locally, you're probably gonna pay somewhere between 25 and $40. Uh, much easier than a day or two, just plan on it and get in the thing if you don't need it. If it works fine for you, you can always return it. Uh, the particular wires off this one came with about 15 to 20 feet. Obviously I didn't need that much. I mean, it's running from right here uh, through a stud up to right here. So what I ended up doing is I cut all that down originally, and then I actually hooked it into uh, both my CNR. Did not work as advertised. Uh, reason did not work uh, after I cut it down. Uh, actually, let me back up. When I first put it in, I did a test fit before I cut it down, and it worked just fine. Uh, this was hooked into the C right here, etc. After I cut it off, you see this tinning. You see the solder on the end, it's called tinning right there. Uh, if it's coming in but it's silver in color and that is what they do uh, with new wire at the very end to keep uh, the strands together so that stranded wire I uh, hooked it in on both the C and the R and she worked like a champ and then after I cut the wire which is regular normal stranded copper wire behind it uh, hooked it back in and I was uh, not getting what I wanted I was getting a strange sound out of the Dynaglo every time I click it on up there so I click it on and she was like making a thumping noise, which tells me it's probably something the thermostat was trying to kick on and off. So I uh, stopped it, obviously. And then I was like, all right, 
It worked fine before. It is not working fine now. What changed? Only thing changed is this tinning that I had on both ends, the soldered ends there. I clipped that off because it was at the end of the 15 to 20 foot of wire. So what I did, you can see now the electrical tape, I just went on and put it back on there and uh, and then rehooked it. So it was, uh, so behind this electrical wire, you had the regular stranded copper wire. I just reattached that stuff I cut off and then I put it back in both the C and the R. And after I reconnected the tin, uh, the tinned wires, the solder wires essentially, they came from the factory, I attached them to the new cuts that I had and they now are the ones going into both the C and the R. I have zero issue, it works normally. So it's either something with the actual tinning or I believe if you look in the Nest instructions, if you go into the deep dive on the technical, it says do not use uh, stranded wire, use saw wire. So it could be one of the two things. It could either be just uh, something with this right here, uh, provides a different amperage going through or the fact that it is no longer stranded is now put together as far as essentially one solid wire. One of those two worked. Anyways, what I did worked. So if you buy one of these C-wire transformers, just make sure to reuse the very ends when you install it into the nest and you'll have no problem. This has been here now for a month, month and a half and zero issue. So it works and that's why I'm showing it to you. All right, let me put this wire back in, this one back into the C. Uh, I'll show you that and I'll put the faceplate back on and then we'll show that this thing works normally. Okay, wires you see all right now. Uh, the red off, the, I believe the one going to W1 from the heater. You also have the white one from the number two uh, going to the R. And then the C wire transformer. It doesn't matter which one goes to where. Uh, it's just the two wires you have. One's going to go in with that R. Uh, the one that's the number two coming from the actual heater, and then the other one's going to go to the C-COM wire. There are 10 now. That's what the black flush tape is just holding on to cover the connection. I'm going to put this on and show you that it works. Okay, heater is off. What I will do is I will actually bring up my actual Google Home. All right, shop thermostat. All right, she's off. You see, I got the safety set for 35 degrees, as I mentioned earlier. That way, even if I don't have the thermostat on, it will not let freeze in here, and the way paint or whatever else I have in here that I'm worried about will not freeze. And I can just leave it in here versus stick it underneath my cross space of my house like I usually have to. All right, and let's go with power. Select heat. Right now, it's set way high for 69 because we had some people out here earlier. 56. Actually, I think I set to 55 was my final, but there it is right there. I'm showing you the test. Coming over here, the actual heater itself it is on. You can see the H on the bottom. That means it's on the high. 7,500 watt is the output. And then only on only other thing on the back of this heater, when you're using the external, per the instructions. You're going to set it to the number two right there, uh, the one to the right as far as the toggle switch that shows the external foam step. And that is how you hook up this Dynaglow 7500 watt heater to a Nest E thermostat. Hopefully it works for you. Have a good one.